channel called dumbass reviewer which involved a lot of toy reviews or mostly toy reviews but in this channel I decided or I deleted the other channel to just do my own thing do something different with this channel but yeah so hey guys Steven here and this time we'll be taking a look at my um, small X-Men collection so yeah but what I mentioned earlier with my dumbass reviewer channel that's been long gone if you guys, for those who, who've been sticking around, you guys have probably know what this background is. You know, the background should be familiar to you guys. And um, I know a lot of people would ask or claim that, am I in the bathroom just because of the tiled walls? And no, this is actually the kitchen because I'm using the kitchen countertop because there's a lot of space and room to showcase uh, my figures. And like I said, we're gonna be taking a look at my small X-Men collection just because I figured, why not? Why not show off or talk about my X-Men figures? And I guess the reason behind why I chose the characters and the figures that I chose. And sure, some of you guys will probably comment, oh, you, you should get Nightcrawler for your collection or Sunfire or Archangel or Forge and all that. And I know, I'm missing a handful of other characters, but I just don't have room in my collection and this is the best I can do. And some of you will probably wondering, oh, how come you get these specific versions of the characters or whatever, or these costumes, but I'll address it later in the video. So yeah, I'm gonna talk um, about some of these figures one at a time, but, and I don't know how long this video is, depends on how much I talk, but yeah, let's get started, shall we? Like, this is pretty much my X-Men collection. What you see here, this is pretty much all I got. And yeah, the reason behind this for those who've been watching my channel for a long time, you guys know me, I am a big fan of X-Men, mostly the 90s, but I do love the 80s, the 70s, 60s, even some of the early 2000s, but for the most part, 90s is my jam when it comes to the X-Men, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of other people. But yeah, so we'll just start from left to right. So we'll just take a look at the first figure, which is um, Kitty Pride. Not sure if she's gonna focus, but yeah. The reason why I chose the Toy Biz version of Kitty Pride, and I used to have, I believe it was the Hasbro Juggernaut Wave Kitty Pride, which is based on her all new X-Men era, which I'm not a fan of just because I'm not a fan of modern X-Men. And that's the thing. And the reason why I chose this Kitty Pride is because of her head sculpt. Because her head sculpt reminds me of classic Kitty Pride, even though she's wearing, you know, the astonishing X-Men costume that she wore at the time when the figure was out. And and the body mold she uses is the uh, Jessica Alba, Sue Storm, Invisible Woman movie figure body mold. So there's that. But yeah, I just wanted this Kitty Pride because the head sculpt. Because, and the newer Kitty Pride is a bit expensive and that's what I'm starting to notice with Hasbro figures where um, since Hasbro makes, re they remake versions of old characters and some of them are better than the original Toy Biz ones but most of them are not just because it's Hasbro. Come on now. Hasbro likes to um, drop the ball on something on most things but yeah I just chose this Kitty Pride because of the classic head sculpt and since the newer Hasbro figures have a lot more demand and little supply it seems that the Toy Biz figures the Toy Biz figures are losing value so that's why most of this collection right here are Toy Biz stuff so yeah. So there's this Kitty Pride. So I'll just move her to the side. Uh, next, we'll take a look at Bishop. Bishop is one of those characters who I really like, you know, reading. And the reason why I chose the Toy Biz Bishop is because the newer Hasbro one is just, I'm not paying, you know, over $20 and up for a Bishop figure, even though the newer Hasbro one has better proportions and it has a better head sculpt just because the head sculpt is more accurate to the comics and hell even the 90s cartoon at the time but I got this one because the one thing that this figure wins over the newer one is the detail and it seems like uh, Toy Biz took liberties with the design of the character which is isn't a bad thing because the details look awesome like the added details even though the newer Hasbro one is more comic accurate 
This one, it just looks cooler, but I guess as a figure, it doesn't really function well just because, first of all, the proportions are all over the place. It's exaggerated while the newer Hasbro one works better, but I just got this one because of the price. Like I paid $12 for this guy, while um, the newer one goes for like $20 and up and $30, like I'm not paying that for a, a figure that's barely recent, but yet people like to sell the newer Hasbro figures for ignorant prices. So yeah, absolutely not. But I still like this figure. This figure is awesome. Uh, next is the Marvel Select Colossus. I know a lot of people are into the uh, two-pack, the newer Marvel Legends 80 years two-pack with the Juggernaut wave, but personally, I think this Marvel Select Colossus is still, you know, a figure that works for me. And it's funny because a lot of people say that he's a little bit out of scale and it seems to be the case when you watch videos, but in person, if you have the Marvel Select figure of Colossus in person, I, I think he works with the rest of the other, you know, X-Men figures. Like, see, you can look in this camera right now and think that, oh, he seems really out of scale, but in person, trust me, in person, he, he's way better. You know, he fits well when you actually look at him in person rather than through the camera or, or YouTube videos. But yeah, Marvel Select Colossus. I still think he's the best version of Colossus. Next one are, or is the Wolverine figure from the Rebel Tech Yamaguchi line. And as you guys can see, this is the bootleg. The reason why is, you know, I could easily afford the real deal, you know, the $80 on Rebel Tech Yamaguchi, but I just choose not to. Just because for me, when it comes to like buying figures at a high price point, and I know they're high end figures, it's just kind of one of those things like, I would drop 80 bucks, but then by the time I receive the figure, I'll second guess myself and feel like, or question myself, is it worth $80? Even though no matter how good the figure is. But the bootleg one, you know, when it comes to these bootlegs, I feel like these guys work. And they're just as good as the real deal, but even though mine has some defects, which is right here, you guys can see the gap, and I tried um, heating it up and trying to work it out, and it just doesn't seem to work, and maybe some of the paint jobs is kind of meh, but for the most part, I still think um, bootlegs are your best bets for those who can't you know, afford to pay the $80. Like, I think these guys are your next best shot. But yeah, and I chose this Wolverine because the one thing I love about the Rebel Tech Yamaguchi line is that the aesthetic, the style they're going for reminds me a lot of Marvel vs. Capcom. And that's another thing that made me, you know, love the X-Men even more is when you play the X-Men characters in the Marvel vs. Capcom games or X-Men vs. Street Fighter, X-Men Children of the Atom, you know, those kinds of games. This is what he reminds me of, even though he's wearing the Astonishing X-Men outfit. I just think, you know, the style alone, the way the claws look, you know, it gives that Marvel vs. Capcom vibe and I'll take this. So, that's the reason why I chose this Wolverine. Even though I would have preferred the Tiger Striped outfit, but the Astonishing X-Men is uh, just as good. So, yeah. The next one is the bootleg uh, Rebel Tech Yamaguchi um, Psylocke. And there are dead giveaways, her hair. Because the real figure, her hair is translucent, I believe, and she has blue joints on the her shoulders, which on the real figure, the shoulder joints are actually flesh colors. But yeah, this is one of those bootlegs which is really not so good, in my opinion, just because the torso for her snapped on me. So I had to super glue it, now I lost her torso articulation. But other than that, I like this figure. I actually prefer this over both Toy Biz and the Hasbro version of Psylocke. I don't know, I just like this anime look. And like I said before, the Rebel Tech Yamaguchi line reminds me of Marvel vs. Capcom and all those kinds of games. So that is why I got her. And she looks really good. She still functions well. It's just I lost the torso articulation. But yeah, so there's that. And this one was a recent purchase, which is the X-Men Classics Storm in her white outfit, even though it has a lot of, you know, the blue paint wash over it. Um, personally, I got this one, like I said before, um, it seems that the Toy Bits figures seem to lose value because of the newer remakes of 
characters from Hasbro. The reason why I picked this up is just came down to price because the newer um, Storm figure is just ignorant pricing at this point. People are pricing her at $30, $40, $50, $60. Yeah, no, absolutely not. So yeah, so I decided to pick this one up instead and I still think she works. Yes, she looks a little skinny, but the newer figure is no different either just because when it comes to most of the female X-Men characters, they should be using the Juggernaut Wave um, Rogue body, you know, the Moonstone body, you know, the thick body mold. But for some reason, when it comes to Storm and the newer Jim Lee, um, Jean Grey coming out, it just seems like they like to use the skinny body mold. I don't know why, but they should be they should be using the Moonstone body mold. But yeah, I just picked this up just because. Like I said, it came down to pricing, and that's all there is to it. So, and she, I still think she's a great figure. So, yeah. Uh, Professor X. This Professor X is from the movie because I'm not paying, you know, a crazy price of the, uh, the hover chair Professor X, the comic book one, and I believe the standard retail price goes for $40, which is fine, but it seems that a lot of people seem to just price them 50 and up for the hover chair, which I don't understand why. It just seems like, I don't know. And I get it, he's a highly demanded figure. And like I said with Hasbro, it just seems like when it comes to the X-Men figures, they're always in high demand, but they make little supply, which doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I decided to just go with the movie one. And if you guys know me on this channel, I am not a fan of the X-Men movies at least their live action counterparts, but um, Patrick Stewart was one of the better parts of this and I got the the one with the plastic chair just because the price. Like I said, it just came down to the price. I got this one for $12 and plus it would make sense if you want to have your Professor X go into the battlefield with the X-Men and especially if they're fighting Magneto, he should be, he should be going up or strolling up in the battlefield with um, a plastic chair. So. There's that. The figure does the job, he's just there. So, yeah. The next one will be Toy Biz Beast. Uh, not much to say, I still think this figure holds up. I know a lot of people prefer the newer Hasbro Beast, which I would have loved to get because the newer Hasbro Beast um, looks a lot like the um, Jim Lee one, you know, from the comics. And for some reason he's not focusing, there he is. And yeah, I, I still think this beast still holds up. You know, the articulation is fine. The only thing missing is the torso, but like I said, it's fine. You know, this beast figure is awesome. And it's another one of those cases where the Toy Biz figures tend to lose value because I remember this guy years ago would cost like $40 and up for some reason. But it just, now it seems to be more of the Hasbro one. So yeah, I still think this Toy Biz figure beast holds up so if you can't find the Hasbro one this guy is still a good figure and for those who still probably have this guy don't sell him off I, I still think he's a useful figure but yeah okay the next one I've had a, I've had people ask me about this one on Instagram this is actually a custom Jim Lee Cyclops I bought this guy for $30 on you know from a different seller so yeah this is not my custom I'm not a customizer or anything like that and he uses the DC Universe classic body mold which is a really good body mold and plus he looks more muscular than the Hasbro Jim Lee Cyclops and personally I think this figure is way better than Jim Lee Cyclops and I know someone's gonna um, state that oh it's unfair to compare a customized figure to a mass-produced one but a mass-produced figure has to be good and like I said with Hasbro they tend to make subpar figures like the straps on the Hasbro figure are like loose all over the place and I know somebody's gonna comment well you could always glue it but I shouldn't have to you know what I mean I pay $20 which in my opinion $20 is already expensive for a six inch figure and I know the straps right here are loose on the Hasbro one and right here were loose and like I said, I shouldn't have to glue it. I, I should be able to have a completed product. And I think this Jim Lee Cyclops figure is dope. And I like the new Hasbro figures head sculpt, but I think the, the Toy Biz one is better just because, in my opinion, it just adds a little more personality. But 
yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this one. And like I said, the Hasbro figure, I'm not paying ignorant prices for this figure. I'm, I remember even at the time he was out, he went for ignorant prices. What, he, he went for $50 and up, like no. For a $20 figure, he shouldn't be priced that way. And yes, he's a highly sought after character just because of the design alone. And personally, and I know Hasbro re is re-releasing him with the three pack with the Jim Lee Jean Grey and the Wolverine, which I pre-ordered. But the three pack Cyclops is the Cyclops that comes with the jacket. So yeah, but I mean, it's cool that he came with the jacket, but at the same time, it's kind of unfair for those who missed out on the previous Cyclops that doesn't have the jacket because sometimes people would love to get options. You know what I mean? So yeah, and it just seems like the regular Hasbro Cyclops is still at an ignorant price, but yeah, stupid prices. But yeah, I actually love this custom and I think he works. Next is the Toy Biz Phoenix figure. This Phoenix figure, I still prefer this Phoenix over their modern Phoenix. I think their modern dark Phoenix figure is really good just because you have a lot of options, accessories, and head sculpts. But if you were to compare this figure to the Juggernaut Wave, no. I still think this figure wins. Not only in articulation, sure the figure looks a little skinny, but like I said before with the newer um, Juggernaut Wave Phoenix figure, um, she's too skinny too. They should be using the Moonstone body for her, in my opinion. And the Juggernaut Phoenix cannot stand up for shit because of her little high heel things. And I used to own that figure before I sold, sold her off last year with the rest of my whole collection. But yeah, I'm just regaining my X-Men collection and yeah, I still prefer this one. And next is the uh, Jubilee figure from Hasbro. So I think this is the first Hasbro figure I'm talking about this time because I think everything else is just customs, uh, Rebel Tech Yamaguchi and Toy Biz stuff in Marvel Select. But yeah, this is pretty much the first Hasbro figure I'm talking about in this video. Um, yeah, she does the job. Like, it seems like one of those things, like right here, this, no. Like, I feel like her collar should have been raised up just to cover that, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. And Jubilee, in my opinion, even though we asked and begged for this design, at the end of the day, she is not worth $20. Like, to me, not even worth 20 bucks because I don't know. Like, she just does the job. Like, she's fine. I expected Jubilee to be you know, at least to get my money's worth. Like she comes with an alternate head with a bubble gum and removable glasses, but for some reason this one is glued on, even though I would have preferred another head sculpt where Jubilee is smiling and maybe another head sculpt where she has the glasses on her forehead. So I don't know why she, they just put her glasses on her eyes and glued, they glued it. And she doesn't even have any accessories to showcase her powers. So what the fuck, you know? I give Hasbro a lot of shit, not because I'm a hater or whatever, but it's just when you pay as much as $20, you should be getting your money's worth. So, yeah, to me, um, this figure's fine. I, if you need a Jubilee in your collection, I still recommend picking her up. I feel like over $20, she's not worth it. But, yeah. Next will be the Marvel Select Rogue. I actually did the modification, which if you guys want to do your own modification for Rogue, um, to, for her to fit in with your Marvel Legends, you can just look up Marvel Select Rogue modification because you have to cut the lower piece of her calf and she's, and you still be able to maintain her articulation. So yeah, I love this Rogue. This Rogue is way better than the Juggernaut Wave Rogue. And I used to own the Juggernaut Wave Rogue last year as well before I sold her off and this figure better head sculpt you know you actually get like sculpted on um, X logos rather than painted on like I just can't stand painted on stuff on characters this is one of the main problems I had with Iceman right here and Dazzler but yeah um, this rogue I think she's great and personally the Marvel Legends rogue Figure is good too, it's just ignorant pricing. At the end of the day, stupid prices for that figure. But yeah, if you don't have 
um, the Juggernaut Wave Rogue. This is your best alternative. And to do the modification, it's really easy, it's straightforward. And this is coming from a guy who's not a big customizer and who sucks at doing that stuff. But doing a modification for Rogue to fit in with your Marvel, Le Marvel Legends, easy. So, yeah. Next one, we'll take a look at Dazzler. So Dazzler, um, great figure. I actually like this figure quite a bit, but I just don't like the painted stuff on her. I feel like they should have been sculpted. I don't know. It's just, see? It's, it's shit like this. See? Right here. This is exactly why they shouldn't have been painted on. It's crap like that. This is why I refuse to pick up Spider-Man figures where his webs are painted on because of crap like this. So, yeah, other than that, I think she's a great figure. I, um, this is the design that everybody wanted. You know, if you played the arcade X-Men by Konami or watched the Pride of the X-Men pilot, which is up on YouTube, so you, you guys could watch that. And, yeah. And I believe the jacket and the belt are reused from the Juggernaut Wave Rogue figure. But, yeah, other than that, um, a great looking figure. And I like the Disco um, Dazzler too, just because that version of Dazzler I read growing up. So, yeah. And then, we're going to go with Gambit last, but here's Iceman. Not a lot to say. The reason why I chose this one, the Toy Biz one, not because of the pricing, it's because of the way he looks. Because especially with the X-Men belt. That he has because if you played the Marvel vs. Capcom games, Iceman looked like this and he had the X-Men belt looking like this in the video game. So if you played Marvel vs. Capcom 2 or X-Men Children of the Atom, he looked like this. So yeah, that's the reason why I chose this one. So there's that. And last but not least, Gambit. This is actually Hasbro's um, better figures in my opinion. I know a lot of people like to complain that his eyes feel far apart, but no, I think he looks fine. And the way he's posed, it's great and people complain about the joint right here, which yeah, this shouldn't happen, but you know, overall if you can overlook that, this is a really good figure and the jacket is flexible. I was afraid that the jacket was not going to be flexible and that it's going to suck at or it's going to be difficult to pose him, but no, he works fine. So, I love how his hair is like swooshed to the side like that. I know a lot of people complained about that. His hair reminded me of Marvel vs. Capcom, so there you go. And that is pretty much it. That is pretty much my X-Men um, collection. So, hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, and yeah, this is Steven, and I'll see you guys next time.